Hello, everyone, and welcome to a Deeply Rooted Podcast, episode number 197. That's right, 197. <laughs> I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and I am here to share some thoughts, meditate with you, take a deep breath, just allow the next 15 minutes to either prepare for the day or reflect on the day or maybe you're in a moment where you're just at a crossroads wherever you find yourself I'm here with you and there's nothing like knowing you're not alone Here's an excerpt from my book that is untitled, but coming out in 2023. Um, It's a series of my um, art journal entries and essays. And this one is called Try Love. And there's a picture, there's a drawing, I should say, of some suitcases, some balloons, and some good old fashioned boots. Maya Angelou said, Love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination, full of love. Let me say that again. Love recognizes no barriers. It jumps hurdles, leaps fences, penetrates walls to arrive at its destination full of hope. Here's my thoughts on that. I love love. Love takes the edge off any decision I am making. Loving others, being loved. What characteristics do you need to experience in order to feel loved? How can you demonstrate more love to others? How can you invite more self-love into your life? Today's imaginative prayer comes from the Old Testament of the Bible, 1 Kings 18. You are an observer of this scene. Out in the hot and dry desert, You're sitting under a bush that somehow protects you from the worst of the heat. You see a man coming your way. He looks exhausted. He walks without looking where he's going. He also seems to be talking to himself. The man approaches another bush, not far from you, and flings himself under it. You hear him crying and talking. This is what you're able to hear. God, I've loved you and I've obeyed you. I've risked so much for you. Always doing everything you ask me to do. I've suffered for you. Many people have rejected me And because of my obedience to you, I feel alone. You've also shown me wonderful things and you've let me be a part of some cool stuff. You've even given me joy and peace. Only now, none of it seems to matter. 
I'm exhausted and afraid. I feel totally alone. Are you there, God? I'm running for my life. People are chasing me and trying to kill me. I'm starving and thirsty and tired. I can't stop shaking. I can't do this anymore. I'm done. Just let me die. Lying down, this man continues to whimper for a few minutes. Then his breathing deepens and he falls asleep. Suddenly, the man isn't alone. Someone has appeared right next to him. The visitor builds a small fire and bakes some bread. When that's finished, the visitor kneels by the sleeping man, gently shakes him awake. When the man sees the visitor's face, he cries, I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. Oh God, please help me. God responds, eat. It's all you need to do right now. I know everything feels overwhelming. It's okay. Take a break and have some food. When you've regained your strength, then I'll show you the next thing. Then God disappears. The man sits up and sees the bread and the jug of water. He eats, drinks, and falls back to sleep. You turn away from the man and see God is now kneeling next to you and preparing another loaf of bread. God turns to you and smiles. He picks up the loaf of bread and a jug of water and offers it to you. Rest and eat, God says. That's all you need to do right now. Just rest and eat. Don't worry or try to figure anything out. Just rest and eat. Then God disappears. Here's some things to think about. How do you respond when you're afraid, overwhelmed, exhausted? Can you imagine a time when life was overwhelming? Do you feel that way now? Do you need to give yourself time to regain your strength? Do you need to spend some time accepting God's invitation to just be? What emotions come up for you as you enter the story? As you experience Elijah's pain and fear and confusion? As you hear God's invitation to let go of your worries and just rest and eat, what happens inside you? How does this make you feel about God? What was it like to have God serve you?
Imagine God serving you again. How does it make you feel? Diary of a Creative Entrepreneur. Entries dated February 27th and February 28th. I created a lesson plan for March in out, for our outdoor environment. I have all of my process art lessons laminated and am in the process of creating a curriculum for STEM projects. I developed a scavenger hunt that's geared towards preschool non-readers. And I am transitioning out of doing the art kits as my videos on YouTube because I'm just not as excited about that subject matter as about really leaning into process art. I've done a total of 15 videos for the um, art kits and I have five more I want to finish so there will be 20 options for the art kits. In the meantime I plan on making videos based on the curriculum I bought a few years back and never really got to utilize in the classroom due to time constraints. I completed my three videos for the week and plan on hopping on two of the live calls, finally, for the artful selling course I've been paying for. And I officially launched my series of original art on Instagram. March 1st. Prepping and sorting through all the art lessons I've accumulated over the years to create a master list for rolling out the new curriculum and creating a new YouTube schedule. It felt a bit overwhelming to see just how many art lessons I have. But also it stamps out the idea that I don't have enough to work with. Continued unrest at the school over this third classroom that's being created. Who gets the new room? How many students will it have? What will we do about outdoor environment classroom for them? And in the midst of it, I'm staying in place to do my job and try to stay out of it all. And do I all I can to keep moving towards getting the house. Spring break is next week and Josie's 16th birthday extravaganza is going to be amazing. We're going to Tucson and she has found lots of incredible things to do. And I got a credit back from Groupon for those Universal Studios tickets that we weren't able to use. So that will cover the hotel stay. And plus, it's Tucson, so there will be so many cool art experiences that we can have there that no doubt will fuel my desire to more fully identify as an artist. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. And as many of you know, you know, the life of an artist is one where you're creating and inspiring and hoping to be a change agent in the world. And we do that together, right? Some of us create the art. Some of us support the art. To be honest, just like teachers, artists also buy art. <laughs> because we know how, how it can be to... Um, have your fullest expression of yourself out there in the world. And so you want to support that however you can. So here's some ways for you to support me if you appreciate and value the work that I do. 
Well, the easiest way is to go over to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my channel. Um, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers. I am now at 401. Thank you so much for those who have stopped by. And uh, when I get to 1,000, I will start to get advertising on the channel, which I know kind of stinks, but at the same time, it does help support the artwork that I do. There are now over 200 art uh, lessons for you to take advantage of, share with your friends, your kids, have a, a play date with your friends, your community. So there's just many ways to, to utilize what it is that I do and find value in it. Um, also, there are art kits, art journaling kits, sewing kits that you can find and um, buy over on Etsy. I now have a Shopify store where you can buy my original art and thank you in advance for doing that. And um, you can also support the podcast. There is a button that says support me or um, over on Apple and over on Anchor. And um, yeah, like I said, I appreciate it so much. Um, the work that I do in the world, I really do do it uh, from, a, from a space of um, desiring to be a change agent in the world. And when you support me, you are being that change agent as well by supporting the work that I do. So thank you in advance and I'll see you back here soon.